Buongiorno a tutti. Um, it's good to see everyone. Um, I want to say thanks to uh, Lieutenant General Migliata. Bill, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, General Farina, it's good to see you again, my friend. And Professor uh, uh, Margioletti, thank you for that, that kind introduction. Um, I do not uh, want to presume to be an expert on strategic direction south. Um, but I, I have some experience focusing on it. Uh, I've spent the last four and a half years specifically looking at the South uh, in my roles in AFRICOM and as the commander prior to coming to LANCOM of uh, U.S. Army Africa. Uh, and so I've spent a lot of time uh, focusing on the MENA and the Sahel, uh, and I have spent many years uh, serving uh, in the Middle East. And so I think, I think there's a lot of things to talk about. Um, one of the things I'd like to lead off with is, uh, you know, the threat, the threat perception in NATO is different depending on who you ask. What we say in English is where you stand depends on where you sit. If you're in the Northeast, uh, your perception of the threat is probably different than uh, as uh, Professor Marglia Marglietti said, if, uh, as opposed to uh, if you're in Rome. But DDA, uh, the new concept, deterrence and defense of the Euro-Atlantic area, has given NATO a 360 degree perspective on deterrence and defense. And areas that you could arguably say in the past took a back seat to other areas or less of a priority now carry equal weight. And so I think um, it's quite obvious that the southern countries on the southern flank of NATO are obviously more focused uh, in the south, in Africa, the MENA, the Sahel, for example. And so um, as, as I talk briefly about it, uh, the first thing um, I'd like to say is, you know, why is strategic direction south important? And just a couple facts uh, from my time serving in Africa, and I don't mean to insult anyone's intelligence, but as we know, for example, the, the African continent is three and a half times the size of the continental United States. It has currently 1.2 billion people, projected to double to 2.4 billion people by 2050. And that means that one out of every four people in the world by 2050 will be African. We also have a saying that we use frequently here is, you can pay me now or you can pay me later but you are gonna pay me in strategic direction south. Sometimes it's very easy to get focused on those problems that are closest to the door that sometimes uh, we don't put any effort into those areas that are further out. I would argue though that uh, strategic direction south is not further out. It is a problem set that is on our doorstep on the southern flank of NATO and is having an impact uh, on us already. Um, there is the youth bulge, there are ungoverned spaces, there is weak governance, there is climate change and desertification, there is food insecurity, um, there are uh, international terrorist organizations, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, ISIS, Greater Sahara, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, just to name a few who have aspirations to um, expand their ideologies to Europe uh, and other countries around the world. There is obviously a, an assertive Russia who has interests in Africa uh, through weapon sales, through influence, through training um, that they are doing now. China is obviously uh, active uh, all over uh, with its One Belt Road initiative, uh, the economic power that it is leveraging uh, across uh, the continent. And uh, it's no mistake that China's first overseas base uh, was on the east coast of Africa in Djibouti, not far from Camp Lemonnier, uh, which is a base uh, that has been there for a while. So we, we see um, a lot, uh, as Professor uh, uh, Margioletti said, a lot of instability across uh, that area of the globe. And it matters to NATO. Um, we have obviously uh, JFC Naples uh, uh, that is concerned uh, with strategic direction south. We have the regional hub for the south uh, that is 
focused on that every day. And I know we have three briefers uh, from um, the NATO hub uh, that are on panel two, and I look forward uh, to hearing uh, from them. And then within the context of NATO, we are already doing, um, we're sending mobile training teams down there. We're doing some capacity building. Uh, and so there is um, some work that is ongoing, but I think we have a lot more that we need to do. Um, as I go around my travels in NATO, I talk about the need, uh, as we say in military terms, to stack overlays. There are a lot of individual entities that are operating in those areas. Um, and it's no single entity has enough resources to do it on their own. So we must come together uh, and stack overlays so that um, uh, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And what we cannot afford to do is have two entities, whether it's a nation, a non-governmental organization, uh, the EU or some other entity, coming into a country and both trying to do the same thing at the same place at the same time. It's a waste of resources. And so synchronizing those efforts, uh, and General Farina, I don't disagree with you, synchronizing those efforts in the NATO context under JFC in Naples uh, is gonna be critical. Um, and my experience tells me that, uh, especially in Africa, is this is a long-term um, program. This is going to be multi-generational. This is going to take a long time. And the conditions uh, that have uh, grown in Africa uh, and in the MENA and the Sahel um, are not something that can be fixed in a matter of three weeks. So it's going to take a long-term commitment uh, from NATO and from other international organizations uh, to create capacity to develop strong governance so that um, those nations have time to get things in place uh, so they can support their people and really make it a, a better place to live. I was personally uh, impacted uh, by the effects of migration uh, from the north uh, to the south. Um, I was personally involved in operations in the Mediterranean. Um, uh, in the context of instability in Africa. And I think it's something that we in NATO are really now under uh, DDA, the Deterrence and Defense of the Euro Atlantic Area, you know, SACUR's uh, strategic plan for his area of responsibility, are starting to really wake up and realize uh, that we cannot, um, well, we can't ignore it, but if we do ignore it, we ignore it at our own peril. And so I'm actually encouraged at what I am seeing in NATO, where more and more uh, countries and organizations have come to the realization uh, that strategic direction south is something uh, that we have to start dealing with now. And I agree with General uh, Farina that we must do some deliberate planning in the NATO context uh, to identify uh, where the challenges are, what resources we can bring to bear, uh, to solve those challenges or at least mitigate them uh, and then what collectively we need to do in the future so we can anticipate um, problems that we see developing now. Um, in, my, in my capacity as a U.S. officer, of course I'm a NATO officer now, but as a U.S. officer um, we saw um, the importance of capacity building uh, in that region of the world, and we dedicated security force assistance, a security force assistance brigade uh, to the continent um, to work on capacity building. And I can tell you that a small investment in that part of the world returns huge dividends. Um, there is, you know, there are not a lot of resources being put in there. So if we strategically resource um, activities in that part of the world, we can see um, an exponential gain uh, for a small investment. And I think it's incumbent upon all of us uh, to do that. So um, I'm, you know, we are working directly uh, with uh, NRDC uh, Italy uh, and General Freen, I appreciate um, you know, Italy uh, allocating uh, multi-division uh, south, multinational division south to the problem set. I think it's a huge win for NATO, and it's going to provide us resources 
um, and uh, additional capability that will allow us to work on some of those problems. Here uh, in Lancom, um, we are focused on strategic direction south. We think about it. Um, we are responsible for the land portion of the graduated response plans or the planning uh, for NATO. And so we think about that um, every single day. We are already actively involved in capacity building operations uh, in that part of the world uh, and the Middle East through mobile training teams, through capacity building, uh, really trying to enable the partners uh, that are operating down there to train on NATO standards and increase uh, interoperability. Um, but really, uh, our future outlook, we have to have more engagements there. We have to synchronize all the efforts uh, in the land domain and also synchronize them uh, with the air and the maritime domains also because there are many actors uh, that are operating there. But it's not just um, a military approach. Um, it's going to take a whole of government approach. It's going to take a whole of nation approach. It's going to take a whole of NATO approach to solve uh, the long-term problems. So again, I am not an expert on that part of the world, but I am definitely focused on it. I think about it every day, and I think it is a problem set that if we do not begin to take action now, is only going to grow exponentially um, over the coming years, and it's going to get to a point uh, where it will be a crisis, and it will be a crisis on our front door. So it's something uh, that we have to deal with right away. There is a, a, a I'll end by saying, uh, there is an old African proverb that says, if you want to travel fast, go alone, but if you want to travel far, go together. Uh, and in terms of that part of the world and the challenges we face there, the only way we can go is together, especially uh, if we want to uh, get anything uh, solved. So I thank you guys very much for your time and effort. I am standing by uh, at the end to take any questions. Uh, and I'm excited about this dialogue uh, and, and this webinar because I think um, it's long overdue. And I think Strategic Direction South needs to be elevated in importance. And it needs to be something uh, that we in NATO talk about every day. Uh, so Bill, thank you very much. And Professor uh, Margiletti, thank you. And back over to you.